Do you have a PS5 with a broken HDMI port like this one here? I'll show you how to install a replacement port and replace the liquid metal on the CPU so your PS5 stays cool after the repair. This video is a live cut, so if you want to jump to a specific part, there'll be timestamp below. Check the thermal pads that make contact with the RAM and SOCs to make sure those are all there. If any go missing, they will need to be replaced. Remove the pressure plate securing the heat sink to the board and carefully lift the board up and away from the heat sink. I'm trying to prevent any spillage of the liquid metal, as it is conductive material and should stay contained within the foam padding around the CPU. Now I'm checking the HDMI port to make sure all the traces and components around the port are still intact. And while this port is bent, everything important is still in place. Next I'm going to clean the CPU so I don't have to worry about the metal leaking anywhere while I'm soldering. I'm using a Q-tip and Arcticlean thermal material remover to wipe up the metal in real time going very slowly so I don't scratch the top of the CPU at all. Time to remove the broken port, so I use a syringe to apply Kingbo Flux around the mount holes and pins. I'm using the 861DW hot air station near a fume extractor and heating up the port to the point where all the solder liquefies. It should come out with no resistance. If you have to force it, it's not ready yet. I like to use copper desoldering braid to wick away leftover solder still on the pin connectors. And as you go, if you notice flux getting gummier and in the way, clean it up with isopropyl alcohol and reapply flux. Now I'm adding fresh solder to retin the pads. Then I bring in the hot air to get a nice even layer across all the pads. There are tiny delicate components on the top and bottom layer of this board, so this next part has to be handled very carefully. I'm heating with the hot air from below, making sure not to make contact with the underside of the board. And once I see solder in the mount holes and on the pins start to flow, that's when I line up the new port and wait for it to drop through. Now that it's in, I can heat again to adjust alignment. I don't rely on hot air alone if I can help it, so I'm going to touch up all the pins with the soldering iron to make sure they have a snug connection to the board.
You want just enough solder to cover each individual pin, but not so much that it bridges to the pins next to it. If you see bridges forming early, just wipe off the excess solder before continuing. After cleaning away the flux, I test the pins with a set of tweezers to make sure they have a good connection to the board. With that finished, I move on to replacing the conductive material for the CPU. I'm using Art to Clean Surface Purifier for this step. First, I have to finish removing the old metal from the heat sink. The PS5 uses a gallium-based conductive material, so I'm using Thermal Grizzly Conductonaut as a replacement. In this case, you only need to use one small bead. This stuff has no problem spreading around. and I take a little excess to apply a thin layer of paste to the heat sink as well. Now it's ready to be sandwiched against the heat sink again and I'm making sure the board is seated properly so the liquid doesn't come into contact with anything it shouldn't. When putting on the heat sink bracket, don't over tighten here or misthread the screws. Once you feel a strong resistance, you're done. Here come the many screws securing the grounding plate to the motherboard. Then I reattach the front panel to the USB daughter board. The panel's ribbon cables and antennas get reattached after that. Once the power supply is back in, you can reinsert the board into the rest of the frame, re-threading the antenna over the board and connecting them near the front panel antenna connections. Now the top frame and system fan get placed back in and get screwed into place, and the remaining case screws also get put in.
Once you put in the fan vents, the console can have its shell reattached, and I'm ready to see the results. If you liked watching this video or even used it to fix your own console, let me know in the comments. You can expect more repair videos like this in the future, so subscribe if you like. Thanks for watching.